Yeah, the producers say we're moving beyond the boundary rope for this segment on the Sports Mag Zone. As the Cricket West Indies recently outlined its new selection system, the Dr. Kishore Shalilid organization has made the roles of selection panels and their selectors redundant. Instead, introducing a data-centered selection strategy, which will dictate the processes by which players are first considered for and eventually included into West Indies teams. The teams at the foundation of the system are currently being referred to as local selection networks, technical personnel and technical personnel. They will report to their respective territorial talent IDs who will then feed information to senior talent managers with head coaches having the final say. Here is Cricket West Indies director of cricket, Miles Bascom presenting an ideal function of the blueprint. Now, President Shallow shared optimism that the policy will be adopted by boards across the region. Well, Fazir Mohammed has been appointed captain of the Sportsmax team and no new policy will change that. And so he joins us via Zoom to dissect the practicality of this new system. Um, Fazir is with us. Faz, how are you doing this afternoon? And what do you make of this new system? Well, at, at the end of the day, and it's commendable that Cricket West and are trying to find something that... Uh, at least provides a, a clear, transparent pathway 
to, to get into a, a senior West Indies team to bring out the best, to identify the best talent. But at the end of the day, Ricardo, Mariah, and Lance, it all comes down to the individual, whether it's the talent IDs, whether it's the, 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 the coaching uh, personnel who, are, who identify talent in the various territories, it still comes down to individuals. It still comes down to whether you call them formally selectors, whether you call it a selection panel, which is now not as, as, as we've known it for, for many decades. It still comes down to individuals having one, the integrity, and two, the know-it-all and the wherewithal to be able to identify talent and therefore take it forward to the next level. So it, it, it really comes down to the individuals who will be populating the system to have the integrity to at least give it a, give it, give it a go, to give it a, a try to see if it can really make a difference. Yeah, it's interesting, Faz, you know, because I listened to the CWI director of cricket, Mars Bascom, and one of the things he said is that the main aspect of this new system is not that the coach will have the final say, but the more I listened is the more I thought, well, to me, that's the most significant part of this new system is that the coach will have the final say moving away from a system where you have a group of selectors making those final selection decisions. Um, I don't know if that's what you got as well. Yeah, and, and I, I know I heard, you know, uh, Miles making the point about bringing other people to the table, but they are bringing things to the table that the coach may not necessarily accept. Mm -hmm. He may have his own ideas, his own perspective. So well, what is to prevent that from happening? Not that it should not necessarily happen because some will say, well, you know, why go with just a coach? That's a dangerous thing. It's not like football. England tried it. They abandoned it. It, it may very well work in our system. But there are a couple of other things here uh, uh, to Ricardo. Uh, but while we look at this, I'll get to the other point in a moment. That, yeah, the, the head coach really is the one who has the final say. But again, are you going to ignore the input of the captain? Because, because once more, you can look at things as a system, a structure. You could have, you know, everything, your graphs and your, 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 your well laid out plans. At the end of the day, it's still very subjective. It still comes down to, okay, I see this player. He's not scoring a lot of runs, but I see talent here. Or I'm seeing this one scoring a ton of runs, but he clearly is not going to do it at the higher level. How do you translate that? So the, I, I think at the end of the day, it still comes down to the integrity of the individuals in the process. For example, if for example, I'm the talent spotter in Trinidad and Tobago, well, God forbid if that would happen. But if I will, and this brilliant young cricketer, I just don't like him. Or oh, I had a cuss out with his father two weeks ago, and I decide I am not going to recommend that individual. What happens next? Uh, am I going to be overlooked? Am I going to be bypassed? How is that process going to work? Yeah, and you know, Faz, it's a very good point you make about the, the subjective nature of, of the process and the system because, again, when I listened to Miles Bascom speak, um, there was a point where he listed a number of things that they would be looking for in players, and they were all subjective metrics. So, um, you know, that confused me a little bit. I must admit to you, Faz, I mean, having um, watched the press conference and listened to Miles Bascom and listened to the president, Dr. Kishore Shallow, I am still not sure that I'm 100% sure of exactly what they are trying to do and where they are going with this system. I must admit that. And so from my standpoint, I would still love to hear more. And definitely on this show, we'll be asking those questions. I understand that we will have Dr. Shallow live tomorrow on the Sports Mag Zone. So hopefully he'll be able to shed some light on some of the questions that I know that I'll surely have. But um, the other aspect that, that really caught me as well was this idea, speaking about data being presented to um the 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 coaches or the coach um coming from the talent ids or those scouts within the individual territories almost as if to suggest we're not living in that age where this type of data and information um is readily accessible to to everyone 
Precisely, I mean, what additional data is going to be presented in the sense that if you just look at the raw numbers, for, for example, that was part of the point I wanted to make in, in, with your earlier question, that none of this will matter if you still have a mediocre standard of our regional first-class game. If you're picking players who are averaging high 20s and low 30s, don't expect results significantly different when you, they wear West Indies colors. But getting back to that point, what, what metrics, what, what additional data is going to be provided? And again, it's still, I understand what they're trying to do as far as trying to create a transparent system. But again, selection is very subjective. You can have a head coach who gets all the data, all of the real, reliable data, all of the recommendations, and then you see somebody bowling in the nets as Brian Lara saw Fidel Edwards in 2003, who wasn't even selected for Barbados, and said, no, I am seeing somebody special. I am seeing somebody. And all of the coaches say, no, 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 don't pick that individual. We don't see his numbers being significant enough. Doesn't the coach have the right to say, or the captain in consultation with the coach have to write the right to say, I want that person in my team, or are they mandated to act upon the data that is provided only? Yeah. Well, Faz, one of the things with this new system is, well, one, we're looking forward to that interview tomorrow, and two, with the time, we'll see how it plays out because, you know, every time a team is selected, we always have a lot of questions. Our viewers usually send us a lot of voice notes. So I think we're going to just have to wait to see how this structure goes into plan. Um, one of the things that stood out for me, though, is the fact that they were stressing on the... Um, fact that they're going to use a role-based selection system. What are your thoughts on that approach? Well, how, how should I put it? You could say whatever you want, whether it's role-based or however based. The point is it still comes down to the individual who is using the system to have the, the level of integrity to recognize and report accordingly. Because again, if people want to pretend that our, our selectors throughout the region, everywhere, at all levels, are thoroughly unbiased and are, and are, and are fair and, are, and really look at things at, on a face value and, and, and give everyone a fair chance, well, they're living in a fantasy land because we are not alone in that regard because you're talking about human beings, human beings who act on emotion, human beings who are swayed in different ways. And therefore, you, you're trying to introduce systems and structures in a process which still remains primarily subjective. So yes, role-based and so on. I could say, for example, okay, this person, is, is he, he's been picked as a, as a batter, but I'm seeing all around the qualities in that and they're not giving him the chance. Or I'm seeing this young lady who has tremendous ability as a wrist spinner, but because she, she maybe is a fast medium bowler or so on, who is a bit ordinary and still has decent numbers, I want her to, to try some wrist spin and try something different. So when we talk about role base, what does that mean? What does that translate into? And indeed, what level are we talking about as far as these recommendations? Is it for A team? Is it for under 19? Is it for senior team? At, at what levels are, uh, will this process work if you suddenly pick someone completely out of the blue who doesn't fit all the numbers, who doesn't satisfy all the metrics, but to you, has that extra bit of that X factor, whatever you want to term it, who you think will be a world-class performer, even if the numbers don't suggest so. Are you then prevented from bringing that individual forward? So yes, role-based or whatever you call it, 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 it still comes down to individual interpretation of a player's ability. Yeah. Yeah. First, by the way, do you mean like Shamar Joseph? Precisely. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I mean, uh, I mentioned Peter Edwards from way back in 2003. Yeah. Shamar, in fairness, you could have, you will have to say, Ricardo, that the process worked to a certain degree because he was identified for the A team, went to South Africa, performed well enough that we had many people even outside of West Indies cricket identifying him as someone with something special. So, so yes, it, I, I think you can get too rigid or you can get too flexible. It's yes. somewhere in the middle, and I think it still comes down to the integrity of the individuals involved. Yeah, just one more from me, Faz. Um, 
as opposed to what existed before, now in comparison to what we have here, do you have any reservations with this new plan? I didn't hear the question clearly, Mara. Just repeat it. Yeah, as opposed to what existed before when it came to team selection versus this new plan, do you have any major reservations um, except the fact that you think, you know, it's, it comes down to personal interpretation? The danger is it could become more parochial okay. because if you have two selectors or two selectors, a, a coach and a captain, who are required to travel around and take a look, especially the selectors, look at different players, different teams, different tournaments. And now you are having territorial representation with a seat at the table. Are they going to be an intensely parochial to the point of only championing their representatives, which they'll argue is their job, and therefore makes it even more difficult? And therefore it could be who has the more persuasive argument, who has the air of the head coach, who has the air of the senior talent ID person. So again, it comes down to a subjective situation and speak to the integrity of the individuals. Yes, yeah, strong points being made there, Faz. Um, we'll catch up with the president tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get answers to many of those uh, questions. And I'm sure you'll be watching on tomorrow as well. Take care, Faz. Well, even if I wasn't, I'll have to know. <laughs> All right. You know, Lance and Mariah, one of the things, um, when I listened to Miles Bascom, um, and I thought it was the strongest point he made today, that when you appoint someone to do a job um, and you hold them responsible for the result, then they should have the final say in the decisions that lead to the result. Yeah. And I guess, in a way, that has probably been problematic, maybe, maybe not, in, in some areas for cricket, because you have a selection panel that names a squad and then a final 11, and it's given to a coach. Yeah. And, and I'll admit, I know it doesn't always work like that because sometimes the coaches are involved in the decision-making, as are, as are the captains and so on. But where I do agree is that you look at football, for example, when a coach is given a job, he gets to select his team. Yeah. He gets to select his formation, all of that. So I actually don't have a problem with the move from Cricket West Indies to say, let us give the coaches more power in determining the players that they want to work with, in determining what the final squad looks yes. like, in determining what the final 11 looks like. So if... Darren Sammy fails, yeah? If Sean Dietz fails, then we can say, listen, you need to go. The problem is clearly you. You had the opportunity to pick the players you wanted, to work with the players you wanted. The results are still not what we want. Therefore, you are the man held completely responsible. Time for you to go. Let's move on. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing illogical about what you've just said, Ricardo. And uh, I understand Miles Bascom's position. Um, the only thing that I would have to say about this whole discussion is that I, I, I never thought in the last 30 years of West Indies decline that selecting the team was the biggest problem of uh, West Indies cricket success. So, but a lot of people feel so, though. A lot well, of people feel I, like um, key players miss out and no, talent. No, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I don't think that selection of the team has been the biggest problem in West Indies, lack of results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, while I admire the fact that so much is being put into trying something different, which I think is, is reasonable, um, I really don't think. I've never thought that selecting the team is the reason why the West Indies aren't doing well. Yeah, quick one, just to Mariah's point. We have Mar so much to say about this. Yeah, if you have a group of players who are all four out of ten, it doesn't matter what combination you put together, it's still going to be four out of ten. It's a failing grade. And that, and that, to the point of Lance, is what we've had for the last, what, 30 no, but years? If you, but if you have a system like this, then you're able to spot certain talents because you see no, how detailed... No, you're still it... getting 4 out of 10 cricketers. So what you need to fix is improving the quality of the cricketers. And pick the right ones as well. There are many cricketers who feel as if they there should be no in the team right and they're and not wrong in. when they're all 4 out of 10. That's the problem, Mariah. But what if we missed a 10 out of 10? We didn't pick up on Shamar. No, we Until didn't miss now. him. He's in the side. No. <laughs> Break time. <laughs>